In this video, we're going to have a look at how to create this Ajax um, sort filtering system. And the way that it works is, of course, you can go through to the different categories. So instead of navigating to that page, you can just click on one of these tabs at the top. And below that, I've actually included the original uh, WooCommerce loop. And in this original WooCommerce loop, you'll notice here that we have, for example, we, we created some custom output in a previous video for the stock level. So there we say the last eight or in the album 20 available, or perhaps it's out of stock. And over here, you can see the last eight, the 20 available pulling through. So those um, hooks that we created are still pulling through here into this Ajax filtering system. And the other nice thing here is that if you load all the products on the page and you want to load some more, you can click on load more and you'll see how it fills that uh, neatly fills that gap and then loads the rest of the products and also has this lazy loading effect. So we're just going to have a look at how to do this. Um, the filtering only works on the categories. So that's what we have in place. And uh, to get started, then what I'm going to do is just show you that I've taken this plugin, um, the WP Oxygen Elements plugin, which is a posts filter and a gallery filter. So if we head over to the post filter, you'll see um, that we have a similar um, kind of behavior um, to what we have on the product page. So what I've done is I've taken this plugin and adapted it to work for WooCommerce. So what I'm going to do now is um, just to show you how this works then, uh, if you want to download this, you go to um, github.com forward slash wooden forward slash wp oxygen elements i'll include a link below and what you do now is um, you can just uh, how to install section and click here to download the zip file so you click to download what i'm going to do now is head over into my oxygen builder and i'm going to remove this posts filter so we're going to remove that and now the product page will um, go back to the original i'm hitting the save button let me just delete that rather right so now we're back to the original products page if i head back to the website and i refresh you'll see that we're back to the original products page the other thing that i need to do is uh, we'll go to the plugins page and then in the plugins page i'm going to just deactivate and delete that plugin and then we'll upload everything from uh, with a clean kind of upload and install so as you can see um, on the page and what we're looking for here is oxygen custom elements so that's the one that we're going to deactivate and then we'll install And load up a clean install. The reason I'm doing that is because I have made some changes now to this plugin to accommodate the product. And so I just want to show you what it looks like when it's first uploaded and also how to find it inside Oxygen. So, right, that's deleted. Now, what I'm going to do is um, add the plugin. So, we'll go to add new. I've downloaded it from this website. Now, I'm going over to my WordPress install, upload plugin, choose file. There we have the file that I've just um, downloaded. We're going to install now. So pretty much the standard install procedure for any plugin. We'll activate the plugin. Right, so the plugin is activated. Here you'll see Oxygen Custom Elements. And now what I'm going to do is head over to Oxygen. So I have Oxygen here. And in order to see that plugin in my website now i will just reload oxygen or it's you could just be starting up oxygen for the first time so we're loading up oxygen right so oxygen is loaded and you'll see how it's the standard oxygen install and now what i'm going to do is add that new um, element and where to find the new element is here under basics at the bottom you'll see this new element called posts filter so I'm going to add that to my website. It'll add it to the bottom. So I'm just going to open up um, 
the tree view here and drag that to the top so that the post filter now fits in above the products. We'll hit save and now we'll head over to the front end of the website. So let's do that. We'll go to the shop. Right, we're on the shop page and now you'll see that it's pulling in posts, but we want to actually be pulling in the products. So what I'm going to do now is just edit a couple of items in that plugin and it'll start pulling through the product information. So first thing I'm going to do then is go to plugins and I'm going to go to the plugin file editor. Uh, you should probably not do this on a live site. Um, I'm just doing it this way so we can see the changes quite quickly. And so here we go down to oxygen custom elements. Going to select that. So when oxygen custom elements loads up, what we do is we go to elements and we want to look at the post filter. So we go to post.filter and we look for the post.filter.php file. And here we are in the post filter. So the first thing that we want to do now is change from editing the post to editing product. So that would be the post type. So the easiest way then to find the reference to the post type is control find and just look for post underscore type. And you'll see here we have the post type and I'm going to change that immediately then to product, update the file and head over to the website. So that's the first step in making the change. Now you'll see that um, nothing changes on the website. So it's not that simple to just change one element and everything is updated. So we head back here to the, um, the uh, filters and we're just going to check for another post type. So we have, and you'll see here that there's another post type here. And we're going to change that one to product as well. And we'll update the file. And now when we're on the website and we refresh, you'll see that the products come up. And what's interesting is that if I click on the read more button, it'll take me through to that product. But what's not showing are the product terms. So at the moment, the terms are still the terms related to posts. So of course, there'll be nothing found. And also, we still don't have the product information displayed in our loop. So to now address the terms, what we need to do is head over. And what we want to do is change from category, the taxonomy from category to product underscore cat. So you can see that here, line 195. And we'll update the file. Now we'll head over to the website, refresh, and you'll see that we still don't have the product category visible here, even though we've changed the taxonomy to product cat. So to do that, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, just head back to the top of the file and we'll do another file find and we're going to look for category. So you'll see here now that terms get terms and this category here we're going to change to product underscore cat. And you'll see here that this is actually the filter that appears um, on the page. So now when I hit update file, I'm going to head over to the front end and refresh. Right, so you'll see we're still showing uh, uncategorized. So now we're going to head look for the next category reference. And that's, uh, we don't need to look at the slug so much. And then you'll have a look here and you'll see there's another um, get terms reference and we're also going to change that one now to product underscore cat. And we'll update the file. Head over to the website. And now you can see that we have the categories visible. And if we click on them, we're also now filtering the products correctly. So with a few changes now, 
we have um, the filter working as it should and if you like it like this you can actually leave it like this but maybe we want to start pulling through some of the product information so to do that um, we'll head over here to the um, business bloomer visual hook guide and what we want to do is pull through the price and this pulls through, and this also pulls through the rating so what we're looking for here is the uh, the WooCommerce Aftershop Loop item title. So I'm just going to copy that first piece. This is the ad action. Now I'm going to head back to the editing page and I want to find the layout for the products so that I can just make some changes to the layout. So on the page then from about line 209 you will see the layout of what we see on the page and if I scroll down you'll see here's the excerpt and here's the read more button, here's the title, uh, the category slug, category name, and here is the image size. So there are the image sizes. Now what I want to do is make some changes. So if I want to output the information that I've just copied, um, maybe I don't want the excerpt, so I'm going to copy out, comment out the excerpt, and now I'm going to copy in the code that I copied right now what we want to do of course is change this from an add action to a do action because we wanted to ex execute this code so i'm going to do that and update the file and now when i go over to my layout you will see that we now have some of the product information coming through but the spacing is terrible so to fix that we just quickly head back and now what i'm going to do is just comment out that p wrap there and then the closing p wrap down there right now i know that that will now uh, resolve some of those spacing issues and you'll see by doing that we've automatically started to pull through the product information, so the out of stock comes through, the last eight is there, the 20 available is there, the rating is there, the price, if it's a price on sale. So it's already pulling through some of that information and it's starting to look like a shop. Next thing that we want to do is we want to change this read more button to a buy now button. So we head back to the visual layout and we head down here to the add to cart. So we see the Add to cart and now I'm going to then select this WooCommerce after shop loop item. Go okay, back to editing and now this is the button that um, was originally in place so I'm going to comment that out and what I'm going to do then um, just a normal HTML comment and what I'm going to do now is add um, my element in or the PHP element in. So we just put in some PHP, open, um, close, and then I'm going to paste in the add action, and then we do the same as before. We change that to the do action so that it executes what needs to be done, and we put in the closing um, semicolon, and we update the file, and now we're going to go through and have a look at what we've done and what we've managed to achieve now is the add me or I'm on sale and we did create a function earlier or a filter that changed the output of what's on the button depending on whether it's on sale or not on sale and um, we could even go one step further and adjusting that for the out of stock products but we're not going to be doing that now. Right, now what we need to do is just see if that works. So if I click on Add Me, what happens? So yes, it does Add Me. It shows me that it was added. And if I click on View Cart, it'll show me back to the cart page. So the Add Me is working, which is great. Now what I want to do is I want to wrap the whole thing in a link. Because at the moment, um, you'll see the link is only on the Add Me. And if I scroll down here to the normal product page, I can click anywhere and go through to that particular product. So to do that now, I need the opening link. So if I go back to my uh, visual hook guide, you'll see that 
The after shop loop item also includes the WooCommerce template loop product link close. Now what I'd like to do is get the product link open. So if I look here, I see we have the product link open and it's the before shop loop item. So I'm going to copy that one, head over to the website. Now scroll up and before the image is echoed out, I'm going to add in that uh, piece of code. So uh, let's have a look and see. And now I'm going to just change that from the add action to the do action and update the file. Head over to the website, do a quick refresh. And now what you'll see is that the whole element is a link. So now I can click on the image where I couldn't click before. I can even click in this white space and I can go through the beanie with logo. So that's great. That's looking good. Everything there looks fine. Um, the layout looks kind of good. Um, yeah, everything's lining up nicely. Um, it's showing the stock and we effectively now have a shopping site. Let's test the load more. And there we have the load more working as well. So this works great. It only works on the taxonomy. So if you have a small shop, something like this, and you'd like to implement, well, that's pretty much then how you would implement. So yeah, just to recap then, it's this plugin here from, um, from github.com, the custom elements for Oxygen Builder. I'll include the link below. And it's simply then a case of installing making a couple of changes and then you can have this nice um, interactive way of displaying the products. The nice thing then is that of course people don't have to navigate through to the category and the nice thing is because we're using the hooks from WooCommerce you can then write custom functions then to hook in and out and you can see that whatever we did here is also then respected in the layout that we have inside this Ajax layout. Well I hope you found that interesting and thank you for watching.